Hello everyone, NS101, this is Captain Teal, and I'm gonna be talking to you and finishing up a lecture. So if you're in my sections, we didn't get to this stuff. My sections are uh, Monday at eight o'clock and, and uh, then again at 9.05, and on Tuesdays at eight o'clock. So we didn't quite get there on this material. So that's, I'm kind of filling in the blank. If anybody else wants to watch this, certainly, uh, and if you want a little bit more, maybe you'll get my take on it. So let's go. We're going to be talking about steering because um, that's where, where we were at and then we're going to go on and talk about lookout. So steering uh, feedback indicators. Now some of you may have heard this and we'll just continue on. We, got, we have uh, three different instruments here. We've got a rudder order uh, indicator, a rudder angle indicator, and a rate of turn indicator. So we'll go We'll go here, this is number one, then we'll come over here to number two and over here to number three. So rudder order, this is directly on the steering wheel and when the helmsman turns the steering wheel, right there, you'll see this. And if you, as soon as you turn that, this is the, this is showing you where you have turned the wheel or what you are asking out of the machinery, the, the steering gear in the steering gear room of the vessel. Instantaneous. As you do that, it takes a little bit of time for the rudder. Generally, rudders are pretty big things, right? So it takes a while for them to move. So there might be a little bit of delay. So if you were given the order of right 10 degrees rudder, you would repeat that order, of course, as we talked about. You would set this uh, indicator here to right 10 right there. And all, as a moments later, four or five seconds later, we'd start to see this indicator. This is the rudder angle indicator, number two up there. Rudder angle indicator would start to move over, over to this mark. And you see the little dial would move over here. Showing you, let me say this again, indicating to you that the rudder had actually moved. There's a third piece of equipment, and make sure you read all this stuff. Uh, this is called the rate of turn indicator. And this shows us degrees heading change in degrees per minute. So it, it's a function of how fast you turn. I said this in class to at least one group. So if you are turning it, if you have a rate of turn of 10 degrees per minute, now that's not rudder angle, that's, that's rate of turn, 10 degrees per minute, it's gonna take you, let's see, 36 minutes to make a full circle. Think about that. For a ship to make a full circle using 10 degrees um, of rate of turn, 10 degrees per minute. That's longer than it takes you to drive to Bucksport. Now that's a very, it's not an aggressive turn. I mean, you certainly could get much, much faster than that. You can see that a rate of turn goes up to uh, 30 degrees. And there are some ships that it would actually go a little bit more. Okay, so we'll go on to the next, the next stage here. Um, so this is, um, on, the, on a bridge wing of a ship and we are looking from the port bridge wing, we're looking in towards the wheelhouse and we can see that there are rudder angle indicators and engine RPM indicators out here on the bridge wing so that the people who are uh, directing the vessel, in other words, conning the vessel, can see that when they're on working from the bridge wing. When they're in a situation where they're outside, not in the wheelhouse, but these are a duplication of the displays. The displays on the previous slide are positioned in the wheelhouse above the forward windows. Similar feedback displays are mounted outside so that allow for the conning officer to view when they are working from the bridge wing. So check that out on the state of Maine and you'll see that. I wanna to talk to you about engine controls here. And we've got two different uh, types of devices, sort of old school, almost antique, and then something which looks um, more modern, of course, and I'm talking about this and this. Uh, we use the term engine order telegraph. And you may have seen these terms. This says full, and we can see the word ahead here, full ahead, half ahead, slow ahead, and dead slow. Stand by engine, stop, finish with engines, and then a stern, dead slow, slow, half, and full. So this was a technique. This is called an engine order telegraph. 
very traditional. What does a telegraph do? If you have any sense of history, knowledge there, a telegraph sends a signal, not really a coded signal necessarily, but sends a signal to a remote location. There was something very similar to this in the engine room of old ships. And if we move this lever, then that would, that would be a uh, engine order, which being, was being sent to the engine room to request of the engineers that they create RPMs for slow ahead or half ahead or, or stop engines or whatever it was. Well, that's very traditional. That, that, that I, you know, we, we, still, we still do it. And we might see, and you'll see this on the state of Maine, if you go up, uh, this is not the state of Maine, but if you go up there, you'll see this little table under you know, some plastic laminate that's basically using the same terminology. So understand that those terms are also being used. These can be used as a telegraph. These are actually throttle systems down here that we would see and it can go back and forth. So we've got some pitch and some throttle and we'll talk. You'll learn more about those over time. So we're going to go into the uh, lookout now. Um, ships have to maintain a lookout. And you see this nice you know, sort of a visual graphic of, of, a, of an officer here. And what we're seeing here is a nice day at sea and there's one officer on the bridge. Uh, but it says here, keep a good lookout by sight and hearing and using all available means. I will tell you that you don't, you don't ever have the radio turned on. That's a no-no in my world. You certainly don't have earbuds in. You know, you are there to be uh, watching. We see that when we have inclement weather, you see we have an additional person on the bridge who is checking that out, uh, listening to what's being said on the radio, and all that stuff is being paid attention to. And we're gonna go a little bit further on this. Now, this is something called Rule 5. A little bit difficult to read here, but we will we'll get to it. And Rule 5 is in something called the Navigation Rules. It's called the Collision Regulations. We'll be talking about more about that. But right now, let's look at the Rule 5. And this is what it says. It actually reads this way. Every vessel shall at all times maintain a proper lookout by sight and hearing as well as all available means appropriate to the prevailing circumstances and conditions so as to make full appraisal of the situation and the risk of collision. Now, that is an international guideline. That is an international rule. All mariners know that. Hmm. On the TSOM, fourth class lookout watches are posted 24 hours a day. Well, let's see on the, on the bow and the stern, and that's, that's your assigned position. And during inclement weather, heavy weather, something like that, where it might be potentially dangerous to be out on the bow or on the stern. And, and by the way, that does happen. Uh, those lookouts may be shifted to the, the bridge wing of the, of the ship's wheelhouse level on the O3 level of the aft house as well, under that reception deck area, that O3 uh, gathering area. Now, merchant ships are a little bit different. Merchant ships may only have a bow lookout, and generally, those are only during the hours of darkness or periods of reduced visibility. The visibility. Lookouts are um, lookouts use a, the, the, a very a particular way of, of saying what they see and, and, and where they see it. And let, this goes back to the beginning of this lecture where we use this point system. Now you remember that one point is 11 and a quarter degrees. And we talked about the, the points of a compass, but we also use the same te, uh, uh, phraseology for, um, for uh, reporting an, an object. And you can see in this graphic here, what we have is dead ahead. So if you see something directly ahead of you, the person up here at the bow lookout or, or wherever you are, you would say I'm reporting something dead ahead or one point, two points, three points on the starboard bow. Now, this one's kind of unique. It's done in green. It says four points on the starboard bow. So that would be four times 11 and a quarter. That'd be 45 degrees. Okay, check. So four points on the starboard bow or you could say broad on the starboard bow. And then notice that it changes. Notice that it now goes 
three points forward the starboard beam. Now here's the beam here. 90 degrees to the to the direction of the ship, the center line of the ship is called the beam. There's a starboard beam and a port beam. One point forward the starboard beam, two points forward the starboard beam, three points forward the starboard beam. And notice this, one point abaft the starboard beam, two, three points abaft the starboard beam. And look at this, four points on the starboard beam, or you could say broad on the starboard quarter. This one, three points on the starboard quarter, two points on the starboard quarter, one point on the starboard quarter, astern, or you could use the word dead astern. So it kind of replicates what's happening on here in the bow. So you need to learn that. That's going to be something that you'll need to know uh, for the upcoming test. So how do you report what you see or hear? Well, you use it generally. If you are up on the bow, you'll use the sound powered telephone and you'll be, you'll be coached on how to do that. You report using the point system as I just talked about. You identify yourself and then state what you are reporting. Something along these lines. Ring, ring, ring on the sound powered phone. The bridge will answer and the bridge will say, uh, it's captain speaking. Uh, they'll say, made on watch. They'll indicate, they'll answer the phone and they'll say who they are. You would say, this is the bow lookout. I see a red flashing lights, two point red flashing light two points on the starboard bow. Or you would say, this is the bow lookout. I'm hearing a gong or a bell or a sound that you're trying to, or a whistle from another ship. Um, bow lookout, I'm hearing a sound somewhere forward of the ship. It sounds like it's on the starboard bow. Might be a little bit more difficult to, to do that, but you would try to give just enough information. And the bridge will likely respond with very well, or I, I understand. Roger that, something along those lines. So like once again, to complete that circle uh, loop of communications. Here's another view uh, of the whole ship, uh, kind of going through that. And we kind of like this drawing more. And um, so I, I, uh, I hate to tell you this, but you need to memorize that whole thing and you need to have that down pat. So you need to, uh, you, you need to, and what I would recommend I'll finish that sentence. You need to know this. And I would recommend that you uh, you sketch this out a couple of times. Uh, this isn't a homework, but this is a practice sheet that we're going to put in there for you. So let's see. There's dead ahead. There's on the starboard, uh, brought on the starboard bow. There's the starboard beam. Here's the starboard quarter, brought on the starboard quarter. And here a stern and then so forth on the port side. So you could, going from the center of the ship, you could lay that all out just like this previous diagram and make that, um, it'll certainly help you learn. Okay, so we'll finish up there. Uh, you can use that worksheet. Uh, that's, for, that's for your own work. You don't need to pass that in or anything, but you can check that out. Okay, well, very good. So this is Captain Teal and uh, I'm going to post this and when you'll see it, uh, you'll know that you have connected by, uh, by uh, the, uh, both my YouTube channel and I'll also put this on Canvas. So feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel. There's some different stuff on there that you might enjoy. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.